Hi there, welcome back. Okay, I started a new journal. I just got inspired and started making it and yesterday um, I was still getting over a cold and had a lot of sniffling and coughing and I filmed, but I don't know how to do the voiceover. I gotta figure it out. So um, I'm just gonna walk you through what I did. So this, the, the book itself was a cardboard box that some stationery came in. This is the little drawer that went inside of it. And it was a, a little box like this with the lid on it. Had some cute little bee stationery. So I cut the sides off the box here and here. Then I liked this pretty green color. So I left it and I just covered the book with this uh, sari fabric that I have that I salvaged from a recycled, sorry. Let me break down for you kind of what I did here. Part of the reason why I put this little trim on was because I wanted to over extend this just slightly over the side, the edge of the book. And so that kind of um, hides the hides the fact. Not by, by on purpose, but I never measure anything. <laughs> so I just kind of eyeballed it, folded it, with creased it where the folds were on and stuck it down. And then went, oh man, it's too big. <laughs> so I pulled the edges. I hadn't glued the edges down because I was going to go back and glue all the way around the edge. So I had it tight. So I just went ahead, stuck this trim on and then put glued the edge down to kind of cover that fact without having to go back and hack it up and make it all uneven inside. I like how it turned out. Where I got this fabric was a baby tutu. I shop for fabric in the baby aisle all the My time. My favorite is Once Upon a Child, which is a children's reuse store, because you can get a lot of mileage out of one little baby tutu. So this here are these. So if you carefully trim there's a little seam here, right? I pick the, okay, without holding it really close to my eyes, you guys, to see it, which will ruin the shot. I'm just gonna show you what happens when you pick, when you pick it versus cut it, okay? Because this is good information to have. Um, I know some people are not sewer. I'm not a great sewer, I'm a good craft sewer, but uh, I can make costumes, I can make doll clothes, but don't ask me to make anything to fit an adult human. I can make even little kid clothes, little baby dresses and you know, little shorts for my grandson, stuff like that, but don't ask me to do any kind of tailored fitting or, or make a cool dress or even put in a zipper. I'm not good at that. My grandma, the seamstress, used to do the zippers for me. See, so when you unpick it, this is what's gonna happen. Now, obviously you want to unpick it more carefully so you don't get these holes, but you're just going to get a piece of ribbon like this. But if you cut it, when you cut this little surged edge off, they have a way of ruffling this when they, when they make this. Okay. Now you don't want to cut the, the ruffle underneath and you don't want to cut this bit because this bit you're going to need to glue down for the ruffle so you want to go underneath that and you want to cut right there it's not going to be perfectly straight it's okay when you cut it oh it's going to be a little uneven but that's all right but now you have this cute little ruffle here. so i have a bunch of this in blue and I, what i did is i sat one night while i was watching tv and i deconstructed one now this has two layers a sparkly layer and a plain layer. So you can get a lot of tool ribbon, and this is that soft baby's tool that doesn't scratch you. It's like a really soft nylon one. Um, but I like that you get all three. So let me show you. So this is the flat one with the ruffle trimmed off. This is just the ruffle trim. Okay, but see I left that piece there because when you glue it, you glue and you glue this part down right up to the seam. So here your glue would go under this part right here, right between this part and the and the line of stitching. And then your and then it will lay nice and flat in your book or you know on your card edge or whatever you want to use it for. So there's that. And then the very last row or the top row, so this one has elastic on it. Um but I, I just sometimes leave it. So this is the top row. I leave it 
with that elastic and ruffle attached. Because sometimes I want something longer like that. And if I really need it and I don't have any more and I'm down to it, I can carefully pick off that elastic and make it a long flat ribbon like this. But I have so much. I have literally buckets of baby tutus and baby clothes that I cut apart and use. And so I think about it and I think about all that work. If I were to do it myself, it's worth five bucks to me to buy that and take it apart. And I have a lot of beautiful yardage to work with in um, my things. So this is my, these are my favorite colors. I have a box that I fill up with certain colors when I'm gonna create scraps of all the turquoise blue aqua family. And then this, some cool eyelash ribbon, which I'll show you what I do with those later. Um, this stuff, if you, this has all been pulled apart. This was like a rope that you get at Christmas time and it has three strands. So I just unravel it and then rewrap it. Now this is great for when you want like bits of string. You cut a few pieces of this off, chop it up really small, mix it in there with this kind of string. And uh, you have some nice little string bits to glue on the back of your things that you're gonna make. More eyelash ribbon. I bought a whole card of this somewhere. This is vintage, but I thought, what am I gonna do with fringe? But let me tell you, I have found things to do. These are, I get these at Michael's. Whenever I see a cool ribbon, I just buy it on um, there. I don't even necessarily care if it's on sale. If it's cool and I like it, it goes in the stash. This is the fabric that I use to cover the book. I bought this probably in the 80s when sparkly fabric was really popular. And this is just little pieces that I have. Left. Card bits and pieces that I have saved to make some things. I make my own eyelash trim by unraveling. It's a shower curtain. This is a shower curtain and I just go like this. Okay. So I have all this cool blue silky thread and then I keep it in a bag. Oh, I threw that oh. Let's keep it all in a bag, but whenever I need more, I pull it. Now this is green, right? But it's actually, see, one weave is blue and then it's a gold, yellow, golden yellow colored thread. So it comes out, it's not green, it's, it's gold. Because, you know, obviously, if one side is blue, one side is yellow, it's going to turn green. So anyway, I just keep, whenever I have strings off of things, I always save it up. Because sometimes I make little bird's nests. So, you know, I do all different kinds of things. This is, I have been hoarding and collecting 1960s brocade, you know, um, fabric like this probably since the 70s. I would go to the Goodwill and these dresses would be like five bucks at the Goodwill back in the days. But anyway, these make great little snippet pieces. And whenever I use this, I want it really featured. I don't want it buried and hidden behind all the stuff. So I'll just throw that little scrap in there. Um, some papers that I thought would look nice. This is what the stationery looked like in the box. So I used one of the bees off the card. This is the little envelope. So I'll grab a, um, probably another card and this envelope and use them inside the book. I have these, which are actually coasters, sweet paper with the little birds. I'll probably use a couple of sheets of this in, the, in there for writing, journaling, um, some glitter some old vintage ribbon, some other shower curtain ribbon that I saved. Now I can still fray this a little bit if I want a frayed edge or I can just use this ribbon like this. It's be very cool. And then some scrapbook paper that I had that I wanted to use for little oh. elements or little things. So three different types of sparkly, because I wanted it to be winter, sparkly, remind me of the snow, you know. So I just threw it all in a bin as I found it, as it was clearing out all my stuff. And, um, and so then when I want to work, I have a bin. This is one book that I made with that. I made this a long time ago and I didn't do the signatures right. So I'm going to unpick the stitches and redo it. But this is watercolor paper and it's really nice. But I just love the little book. It's so cute. I want to finish that one up. So I'll have this one and this one. And I'll probably put them up for sale in my Etsy shop, which has been closed for a very long time, but I'm going to start selling stuff in my Etsy shop because I just have so many beautiful things. And I mean, I could craft every day till I die and I won't use it all. So I'd rather share the wealth and share the love and 
pass it on to people who who really will appreciate it like I do. And the other thing that I have is I went through my, you know, jewelry bits. And I have a lot. And I just took things that I thought would go nice as embellishments for the book. So little, little rhinestone-y bits that I've made here and there. Um, mother of Pearl buttons. Another, this is one. There was two strips of this on a blouse. And I bought the blouse for five bucks just so I could have this. Because it's really, really uh, shiny, blingy. And it's like, it's, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can. But it's, it's like, they're like embedded. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Embedded in the ribbon. So it's really great because you can use it, you know, on a curve or whatever. Anyway, it was worth it to me. I got about a foot and a half of it. For five bucks, I would have paid more than that for this trim if I were to just buy the trim at the fabric store. Another little piece. I was working at a thrift store and I was sorting things in the back room. And there was a pair of jeans that were all ripped up. But this was on the heel, on the hem of the jeans. So I got like two yards of this from some jeans that we just threw away because they were no good. And picked all that off. So if you take the time when you're looking around at yard sales or car boot sales or whatever you have in your area... Or uh, look on Marketplace. This little rose was pink. But I didn't want it pink. So I just painted it with acrylic paint. You can use your ink. I couldn't um, get out my Tim Holtz inks. Uh, so I just used the acrylic paint. And it was full strength acrylic paint. I could have watered it down and gotten a lighter color. But I don't mind it. So now I have all these bits in here. To work on this album and I'm going to show you I started making some ephemera for it I'll just show you the snippets for now and then the next video is going to be about um, making some other and types of embellishments that I made for this little book and they're probably not all even going to go in the book but I may between the two books use it up and then send like a little packet of them extra to whoever in the um, thing with whoever buys this stuff. So I really wanted to make some snippets that would coordinate with this little book. So this is a piece off of one of the, the cards, one of the Christmas tree cards. This is the edging around it. I just cut it off and then I fussy cut it out so it was squiggly, but I like how that looks. And this is the one with the little blue snowflake. It was white, but it didn't really show up on this fabric. So I put the blue flower there too, and then I went, eh, let me just paint this blue, and it, I like it much better now. These are some pieces of canvas that I had used to make a banner, and these are the leftover little pieces once I cut the triangles. And I really like the triangle shape. I've not used triangles in the books, but I think this would be cool as a paper clip or something. I mean, I just turn it into a paper clip. It's fairly flat. This button is a pretty flat button. It doesn't have a shank. I think it's actually just like a cabochon or something, but it's so, it's so sparkly. I'm obsessed with sparkly things and this color. Oh, here's another one. I kind of wanted it to look like an award ribbon. So I just took bunches of strips of different ribbon that I had or in fabric and put them together streaming down, glued them onto this little silver punch out and then glued my blue stuff and the, the silk bow. This is also another, went to a yard sale and this lady was throwing away a bunch of old dresses that were made out of silk. And I was like, uh, can I have them? <laughs> She's like, yeah, it's all garbage. I said, yeah, but I'll take it. So I brought them home, threw them in the washing machine. Didn't care. They were moldy. Put them in with some bleach and they washed up really nice. And this is all Shantung silk. So I have a bunch of it. And I don't know where I got these, but I need to find them again and get some more. Maybe Michael's. I'm not sure. But anyway, I just like how that looks. It's very light and fluffy, and it lays pretty flat for the journal. Another one. This was an earring. I cut the I cut the little bit off, but there was like prong sticking up, and I tried to file it and didn't really file down. So I just put a little glue at the top and kind of pressed the shredded strings into it, and I like it better. And then cut the, I like to do this on the end of my ribbons, cut the little tip off like that. But I like the, the juxtaposition of the, the pretty brocade with the shred, with the other brocade and 
this brocade and then the, the lace, little bits of lace, and then this iridescent tool, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. They have it at Christmas time and, and at Halloween time. Love this one. So this is one of the bees on the card that I cut out. And this is, again, some upcycled rhinestone. And just little pieces here and there of stuff. When you layer the heavy with the light, you know, it looks it looks really nice. I like that. This is some of that blue ribbon that I showed you that I unraveled. Did I just not, you know, chopped up bits of it and put it in there and just kind of pulled it all together until it was all tangled in there. Another one, this is some lace that I cut apart. And again, just layering different fabrics over each other. So this is a silver fabric with this piece. And then the that was real flat. Another just simple one. I might build onto that one. Do something else. Add a little bit to it. It's kind of plain. And again, this is just three kinds of ribbon or three a ribbon silver lace ribbon two strips of fabric the cotton strings or the nylon whatever this the blue strings that you saw me unravel and a little piece of lace yeah. this one i like it's really simple and subtle but i think it's really cute and it goes perfect with the book and this one so I had a Christmas card. I'll see if I can find one, another one of them and show you. But I've been using a, a lot of the things that I cut out of the Christmas cards to make some of these things. And this one. Because I'm more inspired on this than I am on my uh, travel journal. I will get to my travel journal. But right now, I'm kind of just trying to go where the inspiration takes me. And this is kind of, you know, where I'm at at this point. So I wanted to share that with you. And... If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. And please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you liked what I'm showing you here. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.